blessings on you. Yes. All right, all right. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and we are glad because he has done all things well. We praise the Lord. We praise the name of the Lord. And we're here today uh, to celebrate the life and the memory of Miss Constance Hollis. And we, we honor the Lord for that, and we honor each of you. We thank God for this family, the friends, and those of you who gathered to pay your respects and show love. Amen. Even at a time like this. Amen. So we give God uh, all the glory and all of the honor. We're going to move, and uh, certainly we thank God for the staff of Music Funeral Home and everybody that uh, participates uh, to make this uh, uh, certainly a grand occasion. We're going to begin, uh, and uh, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I'm going to begin. Um, well, well, we'll follow this, this program as outlined, uh, reciting the 23rd Psalm. And we'll all recite it together, those of you. And Lord, we'll say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Next, the reciting of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. And so, uh, again, it is, it is uh, certainly an honor and a privilege. I, I deem it an honor and a privilege for me to be able to stand here and uh, to stand in your presence again. Miss um, Constance, as, as uh, I can remember knowing her, she, she had two boys like my mama had two boys. Uh, amen. And that I know that Jimmy and Sammy, uh, don't get me to talking. <laughs> Jimmy and Sammy, and you all too young. Some of y'all, most of y'all too young to remember uh, Sammy. Uh, Sammy is going on as well as Jimmy. But Jimmy, uh, to, to Jimmy's credit, he told everybody that he met that he taught me everything I know. Taught me everything I know. So Miss Constance's son said he taught me everything, <laughs> and I'm still trying to figure out what part did I learn from Jimmy. <laughs> I knew the part I learned from Sammy, and that's so that's what that would be for another whole another sermon. But 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 uh but you know we we certainly grew up growing up in the branch. You know it's, it was family. We it was family. We 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 looked out for one another. And uh, again, I often remember Miss Constance. My, my mom was in my, y'all that re remember my Aunt Maddie and all of that group. And then when you can't, you can't hardly say nothing about the branch if you don't mention some Bellamy's and Wilson's. <laughs> I, I can't hear nobody talking. Now. But, but nevertheless, you know, we uh, thankfully, God bless uh, Miss Constance, 90, 90 years old. Glory to God. So, so that's a shouting moment right there. Because, you know, some people don't last 90 minutes. But yet, with long life, he said in Psalm 91. And so God blessed her with that. And, and again, I do thank God. And, and I said that uh, because we've come to the time of reflections. And uh, if you have something that you would like to, to share as, as it relates to uh, loving memory or your personal experience, we have a, a space here allotted, uh, two minutes. Now, that would not be two eternal minutes. That that would be two regular minutes. That would that <laughs> that wouldn't. If you understand what I'm saying, and so, hallelujah. We we would love for you to come and just share share with us, and 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 so that the time is, and space is open. We 
good evening. I like to call her Ma, because that's what I call her. But I'm going to miss her calling me and telling me that, baby, I don't feel good today. And I say, Ma, what's wrong? She said, I don't feel like cooking. I say, well, Ma, what you want to eat? And she tell me, I go get it and carry it to her. And no matter how many troubles you had, you could talk it over with her. And when you get through talking, she going to tell you, baby, it's going to be all right. Well, it's all right today because she's at rest. <laughs> Had to take these off. Uh, you better know it. I could. That's right. That's my Aunt Bonnie. Bless your heart. Amen. Yeah, and that's. I, yeah, but Jimmy said he, he taught me everything. You know, I know. I had a lot of learning coming from the branch, <laughs> <laughs> from that whole branch community raised up there in St. Peter's Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, 12 years old, I was the junior superintendent of the Sunday school. But uh, when I got big enough, I went into the far country. <laughs> I went into the far country. But that training, the training and the teaching that I got, it, I did like the prodigal son. I brought my little hips back home, <laughs> and uh, and I'm so glad. It's 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 great to have a God that loves you, and it's great to have a God that cares about you. 
Amen. To the God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our afflictions. Uh, there's a scripture in, uh, in Revelation that talks about God wiping all the tears from our eyes. And uh, I just want to say to the family in short and brief that it won't be this way always. God's got a way. God's got a way to, 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 to dry our tears, to wipe our tears away. And I um, want you to know weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Some people handle, um, handle life and handle grief differently. There's different ways that people express how they feel. Uh, my, my way of, of dealing with any kind of loss is not to uh, sit there and just go back over the negative. I've learned how to embrace every positive thing. My mother, who passed in, in 2015, uh, I was just sharing recently that there's not a day that goes by that I don't hear my mama's voice in some way uh, saying, son, come and get me and carry me to, I want to go to the market. And then when you do with that, you can carry me to Bill's outlet. And I think I want to get me a dress. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and every day is Mother's Day is this coming Sunday. And, and she would call me a week before. And she would say, now nah, I know Mother's Day is coming up, but you don't have to get me nothing. You, you, you take care of me. You, you've been good to me. You don't just get me a card. Um, and if you've got to get me something, get me a pair of stockings. <laughs> and and, and Miss Miss Howard know my mama. It listen, let me tell you something. I don't care what mama said, you let me show up with nothing on Mother's Day <laughs> or her birthday. I can't hear no you know how y'all do. And when you give her a card, she gonna say, Oh, this is for me. Lord have mercy. And when she open it up, it better be some money in there. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to say amen. amen. Because if there's no money in there, she going to say, well, I'll read it later. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's some money in there, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I can't hear nobody. <laughs> That's my mom. Those are the things that pump life back into you. you. You you never lose a person that you care about because you carry them in your heart. And so um, there, there's, there's just so many things that we have that we can just just hold on to and just, just I haven't seen, I hadn't seen Miss Constance in many years, but I still remember. I actually remember seeing her walking uh, through the branch from time to time. Amen. And certainly as I said earlier, I remember her sons. Amen. We all leave a legacy. We all leave something. We leave something behind, and she has left all of us some good memories. Amen. We, we love, but see, the, the, this is what I want to bring in. We have somebody that never leaves us and never forsakes us. And, and, and even when everything else breaks down, you don't even have to pick up the most of you, some of you. You got cell phones. You got all kind of ways to, to get in touch and stay in touch. But we have a God who loves us, cares about us. The other morning I was in my prayer time and for some reason I started feeling a certain kind of way and was I was deep in my prayer and uh, I just felt like uh, God was moving upon me to say, well, what took you so long to come? I've been waiting on you, waiting on you to come and talk with me, waiting on you to tell me what you need, waiting on you. And God is waiting on us. Amen. Some people feel like that this is. Um, this, this, what we're going through is a, is a judgment. It could be, it could be, but more than that, I believe it's a nudge or a wake up call or a reminder that ain't nobody God, but God, that he is God and we're not, that he's sovereign. And again, he's waiting to hear from us. What I like about him is he don't turn his phone off. I can't hear nobody. He, he, he doesn't turn his phone off. He doesn't press ignore when we call, you may be sitting here hurting today, but you can call him and he will answer. And while you're speaking, he'll say, here I am. It's not a friend like Jesus, not a friend like Jesus. Many years ago, 
I was shooting drugs and popping pills and doing all kinds of things. Literally, I was a man on the run, running from God. I, said, I, I told him I, I, I was going to come, but I was waiting till I got old. I was going to come with one foot in the grave and the other one on a banana peel. <laughs> I can't hear nobody. But the Lord reached out to me, and he loved me to himself. And he made me, uh, he made me a promise that he'd never leave me. And 40 some odd years later, he's been the best friend. This, and this is why I told the story. When I was, 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 was repenting of my sins, the devil sp spoke to me. He said, uh, if you, if you get, give your life to Christ, you're going to lose all your friends. And the Lord spoke just, just as calmly. He said, now, if you lose your friends because of me, they were not your friends. And that one thing, that decision I made over 40 some odd years ago is carrying me today. There's not a friend like Jesus. You can talk to him. He'll talk back. Amen. Sometimes people call him the man upstairs, and he happens to be upstairs. But he happens to live in here, too. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. You can't outlive him. You can't live without him. And in this pandemic, what we're going through now, he'll, he'll preside. He'll watch over you. He'll protect. He'll, he'll keep you safe. Amen. Amen. And, and his presence will be with you always. Family, be encouraged. But Tony, be encouraged. You had a good, she was a good lady. And you loved her, Sister Edna. Thank God for your service. Thank God for your service. I know she felt loved and cared for all of you. You made her feel loved and cared about. And listen, that's what it's all about, taking care of one another. You made her feel loved and cared for. And so, again, out of all things, God used her today to call us together. And there's something he wants us to know. He's waiting to hear from you. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Tell him what you need. We need his protection. We need him to preside, provide and protect. He's going to do it now. Some of us are laid off a job. Some of us hadn't seen a check. But he, you know, he'll, he's a present help in the time of trouble. I'm depending on God to take care of me, my family. I'm depending on God to take care of you and your family. I'm depending on God to take care of America. Because as quiet as it's kept, there's still some Christians around here. There's still some believers. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, thank you for your time. Sister Constance Hollis, sleep on. Rest in peace. We love you. God love you best. Would you please bow your head? Kind Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the time you've given us. We thank you for this celebration of life. We thank you for this memorial service. And even to those who, who are watching, those who are able to connect today, we pray a prayer that you would reach out and touch every heart, every mind, every life. Father God, you know us. You love us. You cared about us. Just the other day, we celebrated the, the, the resurrection, how you gave your only son. He died in our place, took on every sin, paid the penalty and the price, and now we have a right to the tree of life. Touch us as only you can, Father. Touch these precious people. Touch their hearts, their minds, their spirits as only you can. Be the lifter of every hung down head and dry every tear. Help us to remember those golden moments that we've shared with our dear sister. And God, we thank you right now for victory in every heart and every life. As we leave this place, don't you leave us. Go with us every step of the way. We'll give you praise, we'll give you honor, and we'll give you glory. And we say thank you again for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Uh, at this time, uh, I believe I'm told that uh, we'll, they'll be able to, to, to view. Okay, so I back into the hands of our uh, wonderful team.